This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. I had a very deep and long conversation with a person that, uh, that finds the, the Judaism of today very, very hard for him to keep. And there are people like me that don't make a big deal out of rules and for me it's okay to follow guidings and rules. I'm, I'm, I'm following, I'm a, I'm a follower, it's okay for me. Like if I believe that there is a big righteous man and he's teaching and I'm listening to his class, so I'm, I'm flowing with that class. I don't, I like, I'm not an arguing person, a fighter, like I'm, I'm not resisting and can't accept. I'm, I'm, I'm flowing until I feel and sense that something is wrong and then I'm stopping and I'm checking. But as long as everything is smooth, I'm flowing, that's me. Now that person came to me with some arguments that were very powerful against what that he sees today as Judaism. Many customs and behaviors and systems that are working in ways that very hard um, to accept. He said to me that he spoke a few weeks ago with another friend and that friend told him, I cannot find even one section in Judaism today that they will be all righteous and pure and good and really gonna represent the truth. I see that in every section of Judaism you can find lackings and defaults, problems, they all got issues. So how can it be that that religion that's supposed to represent the truth cannot provide even one group that will really gonna hold the truth as it is? The real clean truth, the truth, the real truth. So of course that I was immediately very stupid and I was proudly ready to announce the Muna project as the chosen one. So that person looked at me and told me and if you're going to try to tell me that you are holding the real truth, the Emet Amita, so I'm asking you, honestly, are you really so sure about yourself that you're holding the real truth, the Emet Amita? Are you never lying to yourself? You don't find yourself wrong and then fixing it? You're also not perfect. So you see, Judaism cannot supply, cannot offer the answer to my questions, because I want the Creator. I don't want rabbis, I don't need books, I don't want synagogues, I don't want solutions, I don't need advice, I want Hashem. I want the truth. I want Hashem available. And then it hit me again in such a painful way that today in our generation, after years of sorrow and darkness and pain, we forgot about the essence of our creation, that it's really to serve the Creator Himself and no one else except of Him. And because that we fail 
to such horrible fears and anxieties because of those horrible difficulties that we went through in those 2,000 years and more of exile and decrees. We're all now functioning on automatic pilot. We're just like robots, functioning, running, doing. We didn't really check what is the truth about Shabbat. What is the truth of your feelings about tefillin, about peot, about covering your head, putting a kippah, wearing tzitziot. You're just doing it and you feel okay about it. You feel that it's the right thing to do, but you haven't really stopped and asked yourself, what is my real truth? What is the real truth? What is the real will of the Creator for me? Now, because of that fear that is leading us to keep and to do, and we're running forward, and we're not asking, we're never, never meeting the real Hashem. We never meet Hashem, the real Creator. Because you, it's for an example, you have a picture of your father in your house, and every day you stand in front of that picture, and you looked at your your father's portrait, noble father, appreciated, beloved father, and every day you look at that picture and you say, Father, thank you for everything you gave me. You taught me so well. I appreciate you. You're amazing. I have so much gratitude to you. You fixed me. You helped me. Everything. When you bow, you hug the picture, you're cleaning it from dust, you care about it, you check that every, everything. Wake up, your father is alive and you're talking to the picture. Instead of going to your real father, you're satisfying yourself with that picture that really represents your father for you. But hey, your father is alive. And we are satisfying ourselves all of the time with coverings, with obligations, with must, we must do, I have to do, I must run to catch a minyan, to pray in the synagogue, I must put my tefillin, I need to keep Shabbat, I must eat kosher, everything is great. But where is the connection to all of your actions? We must understand that as long as we in our mindset are only, only religious, we can never find Hashem. Because all of that concept of religion came to us only after finding Hashem. Only after that the Creator Himself revealed Himself to all of us on Mount Sinai and spoke with us face to face and literally revealed all of the truth to us and we saw the voices and He expressed His intention and His heart to us and shown His face to us. Only then, Moses start obligating us with all the commandments. But it was secondary. It came only after knowing that Hashem really is life and exists. And He is with us. So also today, the first thing that we must work on is on our faith that it will be so clear for us, like the sun in the noon, that we will know that Hashem is with us and then you can go and keep, then you can go and do, and all the things that you will do will be built on those st very stable foundations of your solid faith. And on that the Prophet is saying that all of our obligations, kol mitzvotecha emuna, are based on faith. Because the righteous man can live only based on his faith. Your life will always will be based on your level of faith. And if we lack of faith, the main part of the book is missing. You can be religious, you can keep Shabbat, 
so-called keeping Shabbat, you can keep Kashrut, so-called ka keeping Kashrut, you don't have no connection to what did you do. You're just <clears throat> touching the coverings of all those amazing things and you never reach the essence, the roots of it. You never meet Hashem while putting tefillin. Can you tell me about this time that you put tefillin and you felt Hashem? Can you tell me about that Shabbat that you felt that you're un, un, uh, uncovering the... the, 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 the the, uh, the infinity of the Creator that you took off your, your body and, and your soul being united with Hashem, we didn't have those experiences yet. We didn't reach those levels that you ate something kosher and you felt the kashrut of it. You don't know what you're eating. You can't understand what you're putting into your mouth. You ate something, they're saying it's kosher, and that's the only thing that you can feel about it. You don't have no feelings. Why you don't have no feelings? Because you're not attached to the mitzvot, to the obligations, through your heart. So you cannot feel. You're connected to them through your eyes, through your thoughts, through your fears. So that's your connection. You're wired through your eyes. Okay, it looks good. So I'm religious. It looks good. So I'm putting. It looks good. So I'm keeping. You are connected through your thoughts. It sounds logic, so I'm keeping. It sounds logic, so I'm doing. It sounds logic, so I'm going to join them and I'm going to flow with them. But you don't feel it. Why? Because you never made your own investigation and the investigation doesn't need to be a negative investigation. We're not questioning the truth of keeping Torah and mitzvot. We're just saying try to connect yourself to those things with your heart, really, with your heart. For an example, there are many Hasidic people, Hasidic people that are wearing eight kinds of clothing. Why? Because the Kohanim, the servants in Beit HaMikdash, they were wearing eight kinds of clothing. So, every Hasid will wear his shoes, his socks, his pants, his underpants, his, his tank top, his shirt, and a vest and a jacket. Perfect. Wonderful. Eight clothings. Like the Kohen Gadol. It's a joke. Why it's a joke? Because not every person that wears eight kind of clothings, that's it, he's a Kohen Gadol. It's nothing. But you want to bring yourself closer to that amazing level of the servants, of the Kohanim? Great. So why won't you do it from within. Why to try to do that from outside? Okay, I'm going to wear a vest, I'm going to wear a jacket, I'm going to put a second hat, I'm going to do... No, that's not the way. Start from inside. Who were those servants? What were they doing in Beit HaMikdash? They were nice. They were smiling. They were generous. They were loyal. They were honest. They were pure. They were rushing to commit themselves to the will of Hashem. They were very, very good people, chasing after the, the will of Hashem. They were opening the doors for the rest of the nation to come in. They were welcoming everyone. They were helping. They were providing. They were doing. They were running. They were fast. They were awake. They were sober. They were not going to sleep. Do all those things. And then, after being a servant, if you will wear those amazing eight parts of, of clothing, maybe, hopefully, they're going to shine in a very unique way that every person that will see you will be impressed by you, will enjoy looking at you, will find inspiration while thinking about you and feeling close to you, or whatever. Also, the light will go into your clothing and will shine in another layer to the outside. Light, spiritual light, is something that comes from within. So you cannot start with the external outfits and coverings and even to think to yourself that by that you will achieve the goal of connecting yourself to the Creator. That's not the way. The real way is to work on our inside on our inside. And our inside must be connected to the truth. And this is something that we're all so far from, it's so far from the truth. 
And we can go and walk in circles and making circles and circles and circles and talking about Parashat Shavua and talking about Midrashim and talking about Gumarot Kedoshot and talking about the Sefer Torah and to tell stories and to bring tales and to speak about animals and about whatever and bring examples from the history and to quote the righteous ones and, and, and to remember every detail that we once learned and Saviv Rashaimitalachun and still evil, wicked people are walking in circles around the truth and not going straight inside. The truth is something that is screaming from inside. For an example, you're standing right now on the beach, you're so happy. It's a sunny day, it's a beautiful weather, everything is super, everything is great. You're standing and you're looking at the sky and you're so inspired. You raise your hands to the sky and you say, Thank you Hashem for a beautiful, amazing, wonderful day. That's a lie. That's a horrible lie that you just lied. You know why? Because right now, Maybe you don't feel it because you don't have a heart. Maybe you can't hear it because you don't have ears. Maybe you can't see it because you don't really have eyes. There are people in the same moment that you are feeling that pleasure and satisfaction in front of the view that are being destroyed by their beloved ones, being humiliated, being beaten, being destroyed in every cruel way that exists. Now, in that moment that we're sitting and learning Torah and talking about inspiring things and feeling our spirits expanding and we're receiving wisdom of Torah and women are being beaten right now and men are losing their jobs right now and children are being abused right now on the clock, on the watch. On this moment, right now, while we're talking, women are being raped, kids are being molested, people are being stabbed, being murdered, being killed, being suicide, people are suffering, people want to die, people committing suicide. Right now, while we're sitting here, while you're standing and enjoying the view, you're lying to yourself that it's a beautiful day. It's not a beautiful day. It's a horrible day. It's the worst day ever. It's the most painful moment of the creation from the day that it had been created almost 6,000 years ago. It's hell. What are you talking about? You just don't have a heart. You don't feel the sorrow of fish that are swimming in that beautiful sea and they're terrified from sharks. And you don't feel their sorrow. You don't feel the pain. You look at an animal, at a deer, you look at a squirrel. Oh, it's so amazing. And today I saw a fox. Today we saw a fox in our backyard. There was a fox, amazing fox. What's so amazing? That fox is hungry and he's about to eat that cute squirrel in a few minutes. What are you going to do about it? You can't do anything. That's how you exempt yourself. And you're ignoring the fear and the pain and the loss and the sorrow of the creation. What do you want me to do? You want me to take it all on my back? Not enough that I'm married to my husband. You want me also to take the squirrels on my back? You're right. But if we want to attach ourselves to the truth, we must attach ourselves to reality. To reality. It's not reality that everything is beautiful. It's not reality. People are being beaten right now. People are being robbed in the darkness right now. People are being thrown out of their houses right now. So we must connect ourselves to reality. When we are crying on our poverty, when we are crying on our issues, we must cry on the general issues of the creation. Every individual must find himself serving the Creator like he is the only person on earth. You must understand that you received eyes from the Creator to use them to see with them the condition of the creation. 
You received ears not to ignore from the horrible things that you heard until today and also not to ignore from the good things that you heard until today. You received the heart to use it. You received money to use it. You received power and wisdom and talents and abilities to invest them into the creation. For that you received all the bounty that you received. For that the Creator treasured inside of you all of your powers. That you will use them for the benefit of the rest of the creation. That you will complete your shape to become like the shape of the Creator. That you will give and give and love and support and care and feel and do with no end. Like the Creator. And you must take the full responsibility on the creation like there is no one else except of you. Because in reality, there is no one else except of you and Hashem in your life. In my life, there is no one else except of my duty, of my obligation to care and to love and to feel. And to do as much as I can in every situation that is in front of my eyes. And I must calculate and think what is more important and what is less. And, and what I should invest right now. And what can wait until tomorrow. And where I can pray and when I should do. And what should I do. And if I should do before I think or I should think before I do. And all those things are things that I need to consider and think about them myself and if I'm finding it that it's too hard for me to think all those horrible thoughts, happy thoughts, I need to find the time to relax myself and to go to Hashem, to the Creator and to discuss those issues with Him and to tell Him. Yesterday I wanted to make a video live and to speak. I wanted to say a few things to inspire some followers of mine. I didn't have the time. I didn't know what to do. I had only one hour and I had to finish my one hour with Bodhidut and I couldn't find the right time to speak. What did I do? I took my phone, I opened on Facebook, I made a live video and I wrote on the, on the, on the topic of that video, join us with your prayers. I wasn't able to speak because I was supposed to speak with Hashem and I felt like talking with Hashem. And I just wrote, S join us with your prayers, talk to Hashem in your own words. And I just videoed five, six minutes of walking in the field behind my house, doing my own Hidbodedut quietly. No one heard my prayers, no one saw me. I was just Showing the forest. I was just so showing the grass, the sky. More than 500 views were live on that video. People were doing it bodedut while I was doing it. What was I doing? Nothing. I didn't do anything. I put live streaming on Facebook. Doing it bodedut. Live we had 500 people watching that video. Now, 500 people that are writing comments. Wow, thank you for sharing such an inspiration. I'm not doing anything, guys. I'm pushing the live button on Facebook. And for those people, it's a real connection to the field. Something that they are finding it hard to do by themselves, on their own. What that I did was so great for those people, really. Even though that for me, I wasn't doing much. Sometimes you can do something that for you will be so small and for someone else it will be a life changing. Last week after the class here, I said to the friends, I'm sorry I'm throwing all my garbage on you, all the classes, I'm just talking on all my garbage. They say, they say to me, they answer to me, for you it's garbage, for us it's diamonds. Your garbage, one person's garbage, is another person's treasures. You can see that. We don't appreciate ourselves. And I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking directly about you. 
When you're gonna try to think about yourselves on what did you achieved until now and you're gonna go with that and share and talk and be brave to believe in yourselves, not in me, in yourselves. And you will go with that and share and talk, you will see that you will inspire other people and you will give advice to people that will be life-changing for them. The smallest things of them all. Once I remember we had a period of time in our lives, my wife and I and, and, and three of our children, when they were still tiny, and we, we, we had to leave one house and, and, to, and we didn't have another house to stay in. So for a couple of months we were like homeless. We stayed in a, in a hotel, we rented a room in a very cheap hotel in Jerusalem. We didn't have money to afford for something more than that. Also on that we had our issues, and, but we managed and after it also we still couldn't find the house. It was a long process and, and while I was, I was in that situation, we were in that situation, I was still going every day to the Shiva where that I was learning in that, in that time of my life. And in one of the days, a friend came to me and he saw me. I was very confused. I wasn't able to focus and sit and learn. I was all messed up. I, I was looking for solutions for, for a place for us to live. And I was walking outside in the parking lot of, of the yeshiva. And a friend of mine came to me and, and talked to me and he told me, you know, I'm very impressed by you. You're, you're giving me so much power. And I told him, by doing what exactly? What am I doing that is so inspiring? I felt like zero, like a failure. My family are out of the house, three kids in a silly hotel in Jerusalem, like it was hell in the center of the city. Something wrong, very wrong was going on over there. And I told him, what exactly am I doing that is inspiring you? So he said that you're coming to learn every day. I told him, do I look like I'm learning? Like I'm walking from one side to the other on the parking lot. I'm not able to learn. I'm not opening books. What are you talking about? He said, but you're coming every day. You're not giving up and you keep on coming. And he was right because I was doing that. And you should look at yourself. There are people in this world that their mission right now is not to kill themselves. That's your mission. Don't kill yourself. Today, don't commit suicide. Don't kill yourself. Don't take drugs. Don't kill yourself. Don't jump. Don't hang yourself from the ceiling. No, that's your job. Today, don't kill yourself. That's your job. You did it today. You made it. You passed through this day. I had a friend that passed away a few years ago. He was a soldier in Vietnam. He told me that after the war, he didn't have one night, all of his life, one night without nightmares that would wake him up in the middle of the night at least three or four times. He was never able to sleep, all of his life. All of his life he was not able to function, was not able to eat, was not able to sleep, was not able to talk, to have relationships. Nothing, nothing, everything was messed up for him. He was a broken, 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 destroyed vessel, completely done, finished, divorced, with, uh, with kids that were not talking to him. A horrible lifetime, couldn't deal with no situation, crying all the time, not healthy, suffering, nightmares from the past, lost his commanders, lost his best friends in his arms, was in the jungles of Vietnam. We don't know what we're talking about. We saw John J. Rambo running in the forest. We don't know nothing. We're talking about people that witnessed those horrors with their eyes and that person was dragging himself every day, every day to try, every day to sit and learn. He was coming to my classes after more than one year that he was hearing me on daily basis, every day, me talking about talking with Hashem, doing it by the dude, go to the field, go to the field, talk to Hashem, do six hours, do one hour, one hour every day, six hours, do this, do that talking with flames of fire for more than one year 
after more than one year, he came to me and he told me, you know, today I made my first one hour at Wadadut. I looked at him like he was crazy. I couldn't believe it. One year you're sitting in my classes daily and only now it took you one year to go and talk to Hashem. I couldn't believe what, what, what I hear. More than a year it took for him to digest my words and to bring it to actions. But then, the next sentence humiliated me and destroyed all of my arrogance. He told me, you know what I was saying to Hashem? I was not able to tell him anything else except of thank you. First time that that person in his life made one hour in Bodedut, and from an honest, learning heart, broken heart, real broken heart, he was not able to say anything else except of thank you to the Creator. And he thanked Hashem. And I'm not telling you go thank Hashem. Not at all. You should find your point of conversation with Hashem. It might be that for you today to say thank you to Hashem going to be the worst lie of them all. You will be considered a liar saying thank you to Hashem. Like the verse is saying, you're respecting Hashem with your mouth, but your heart is so far away from Him. It's a lie to thank someone that you're upset on, to, to thank on someone, someone that you are angry at. You, it's a lie. You're lying. Don't lie. Find your point of truth and, and flow through it to build your connection, your relationship with Hashem. But Him, that broken and honest person, that real learner, that real humble person, that life humbled him, couldn't find anything else except of thanking Hashem on what? On revealing himself to him, on bringing him back to Judaism after 30, 40 years of being away from Judaism completely, making the connection with his daughter again after so many years that they were not talking. Thank you on his not, a new wife that he was married to. Thank you for coming to the yeshiva and learning, hearing classes for me and his connection with me. And on and on and on. And he found that connection and it took him a year. So a person can judge himself. Oh, I'm not doing it but the dude. I'm not doing things right. I'm not waking up in the morning. I'm not saying Kriyat Shema. I'm not davening Shmona Esrei. I'm not putting Tefillin. And you don't know who you are. You don't know which such a hero you are in the eyes of the truth. In the eyes of Hashem. How great and amazing and fantastic you are that you're just not killing yourself today. That you're just holding on today for Hashem. That you decided today to cross another hour, to spend another hour in this world. That today you did something good. One thing good you did today. You don't know how important and great it is in the eyes of truth. In the eyes of the Creator. You can never imagine your importance. You don't know who you are, how great you are. You think that to be a from from birth, a fake from birth, that's the solution for your life? It's not. It's a joke. It's a fake. It's a fake. It's a game. It's a theater. It's politics. It's nonsense. People are lie, allowing themselves to lie and to cheat and to steal and to betray and to do horrible things in the name of the Torah, in the name of the Bible, in the name of Hashem, calling the, themselves the representatives of Hashem, the messengers of Hashem. So what? So ISIS can allow themselves to go and cut off heads. So what? Does it mean that they are really the messengers of Allah? Nonsense! It's not the truth. If you allow yourself to hit someone, to hurt someone, to insult someone, to destroy someone, you're a messenger of the devil. What's your connection to the Creator, to the source of good, to the source of kindness? In the name of religion, he will go and destroy and talk on other sections, on other groups, going to talk about me. Stupid people are talking bad things about me. <laughs> How stupid you can be. How silly can you be?
that I don't do anything bad to no one except of caring and loving people and running like crazy from one place to the other to save lives of people. I don't do anything in my life. And people are choosing to talk about me and to fill their mouth about me and to saying horrible things about me. Stupid people. Silly people with no brain. What are you doing? Instead of checking yourself what's going on in your life, what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your house. You know Shalom Bait, what it means, peace in the house. You know the importance of peace in the house. Do you, can, can you imagine what it means that your wife will love you, that your wife will be honored by you, that your wife will be happy. You're obligated in so many obligations on that thing. It's so important in the eyes of Hashem that your family will live with peace and harmony and love and respect. Things that are foreign to most of us. We don't understand what it means at all. To give space to people. You're so afraid from what they're going to say. You're so afraid from what they're going to do. So you're destroying them daily. You're shutting them off daily. You don't let them think. You don't let them talk. You're forcing them to your will. You're making them think that they want different things than the real things that they want. And you are doing it because you're afraid to deal with your own fears. And you're afraid to deal with the truth that you are weak and that you don't know the real answers. And you're choosing for quick solutions for you and plastering everything to look good. No, I'm religious. No, I'm keeping. No, I'm doing. And you're destroying souls. You're destroying people. You're humiliating people. You're ignoring hearts and emotions of souls, of human beings, of people. You're destroying people in the name of religion, in the name of your fears. Because you don't have no real attachment to the Creator as long as you're killing and depressing and demolishing souls. You're messenger of the devil with a black hat and a black yarmulka and a black jacket and a vest and tzitziyot and tefillin rashi and Rabenu Tam and Netzach Amai you're standing in the synagogue and Mincha and Mayriv in Minyan and Sofer Svirat Omer in public and screaming and you're a breast of El Hasid and all the titles in the world and you are a pathetic liar. A pathetic liar that is afraid to admit that he's a coward. They don't really have no kind of faith. No faith at all. No real trust in Hashem. No real confidence in Hashem. No real connection to Hashem. No real excitement of knowing Hashem and feeling Hashem. No feelings, no heart, no flame, no fire. Everything is off. Except of the lies that are on full time, big time. Lying to yourself, lying to your family, lying to your rabbis, lying to your friends, lying to yourself, daily basis, lying and lying, making up theories and stories and then telling everyone, yeah, I'm doing, yeah, I am, I am, I do, I'm keeping, I'm, I'm observing, I'm doing, and you're not. In an external way, you're showing like you do. Maybe to yourself, maybe to your fears, maybe to your friends, maybe to your family. Because you're afraid to deal with the consequences of the truth that will reveal your weakness. And why you're so weak? You're so weak because you are not attached to Hashem. If you would attach yourself to Hashem, you wouldn't be weak anymore. You're choosing lie on truth and you're lying to yourself so you lose your stability. Because the lie doesn't have no legs, doesn't have no stability. Only the truth is stable and standing forever. And when you're going to attach yourself to the truth and say the truth, say, I'm a liar. Say, I'm weak. Now you became an honest person. At least you're honest. At least you're talking. Say, I'm a liar. Say, I'm a pathetic liar. Say, I'm a coward. Say the truth. It's going to build you. Now, after admitting that you're so afraid of life, of poverty, of the winter, of, of germs, of Germans, of Muslims, of I don't know what, of yourself, of your fears, 
now you will find your ability to start working on yourself. At least now you will start building yourself one step after the other. But as long as you're ignoring your real feelings, your real fears, you will never going to deal with your real problems and you will just going to deny them and erase them and hide them under the carpets and plaster them every Pesach, painting the house not to see the stains, instead of doing tshuva on them and fixing them in their roots and working on yourself and then you will feel the flame of the endless love of Hashem, the endless loving kindness of Hashem. That His love is an eternal love to you no matter who you are. So we must not be afraid to expose who that we really are. So go and talk and be honest. Go and share your real emotions. Say the truth. You're forcing everyone to learn Torah because you don't want to deal with the fact that you yourself don't really want to learn Torah. It sounds crazy, but it's reality. You force other people to lust and desires and you're waking up to have their lusts and to have their desires only because you're afraid to be left alone as the only one that got those lusts and got those issues. So you choose to make other people fall to the same trap like yours and you're waking up people to follow their evil inclination to do horrible things that you will not going to stay alone in that place. You smoke drugs and you feel wrong about it and you keep on offering other people to smoke with you. You're drinking alcohol and you hate yourself for that and you feel bad about that and you keep on pouring and letting everyone drink and giving bottles of wine and whiskey, scotch, whatever, bourbon for the holidays. And why? Because you don't want to deal with your own weakness and you're drinking when you're not happy and you're smoking and you're not happy and you're lying and you know that you're a liar and you're allowing for yourself to sin and to do things that are not in the right way, are not by the book, are not by the will of Hashem and by the name of your fears you're justifying to yourself all of your weaknesses and your lackings and you're selling them like opium to the rest of the people around you that everyone will be stoned and damaged like you because you don't want to deal with your fears and you're killing other people because you choose not to deal with your own weaknesses. And instead of dealing with yourself and healing yourself and admitting I'm sick, admitting I'm weak, admitting I have my, 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 uh, my addictions, I have my problems, my fears, and now by dealing with it, Finding one advice after the next and then being able to provide and to share and to give and to heal the rest of your beloved ones, your surroundings. Instead of doing that, you're destroying everyone. And destroying yourself. But we must put pause on that crazy thing. And to stop that crazy train that goes down to hell and to start taking responsibility on our own lives and to connect ourselves to the truth, to the real truth. Judaism is not a solution. Breslev is not a solution. Tfilin, Shabbat, Kashrut, not a solution. How many people are saying, I'm giving my 10% and I'm not getting richer. I'm keeping Shabbat and I don't have peace in the house. I'm doing Afrashat Chala and I don't have Shalom Bayit. I'm doing, going to the Mikveh and my husband still doesn't love me. I'm doing this and I still do this. I do this and I'm still stuck in that. And everyone are suffering. Why? Why? Judaism. Supposed to be only green. Supposed to be only cash. Supposed to be only success. Why are you not succeeding? Why are you sad? Why is he depressed? Why he's on drugs? Why he's on medication? Why she committed suicide? Why they kill themselves? Why they're suffering? Why 80% of people are in depression? Why? Why? Because there are no quick solutions. Because the real remedy, the real potion of life is the truth. And you're afraid to deal with it. We're afraid. I'm afraid. I'm doing tshuva in public. I'm talking to you from my heart, from my broken, bleeding heart. I'm not 
teaching you, rebuking you, telling you, I'm sharing, I'm talking to you about my mistakes in my life. On my problems. I took my family to do tshuva and I took them to the Bet Israel ghetto for 12 years in that narrow-minded Haredi neighborhood. We lived over there in, in modesty and coverings and, and, and keeping Shabbat and not letting our parents coming with no skirts and like all this craziness. We've been through all of that. We've been there. We've done that. We puked on it and now we're out. Now we're free. Now we're serving Hashem. Over there we were serving our fears for years. We were suffering, we were buried in the darkest place of hell, in the holy city of Jerusalem. Yes, it was bitter than hell. It was the worst. There are diamonds over there, there are pearls over there, there is gold over there. We took it and ran away. <laughs> when, I, uh, when I chose to leave the yeshiva that I was learning, so one of the rabbis over there, he asked me, but what are you going to do after you're going to leave the yeshiva if they're not going to let you speak to the rabbi anymore? The community, the management over there. What are you going to do if they're not going to let you in to speak with the rabbi again? When we were there, we were like hanged on him like there is no other source of life. And that's where our, was our mindset. We've been educated for that. Only like a rav, a rav, a rav, a rav, a rav. There is nothing except of a rav, a rav, the rabbi, the rabbi, the rabbi. Nothing else, the rabbi, the rabbi, the rabbi. And when I decided to leave, I realized I have a job, I have other things to do. I didn't want to stay over there. And I knew why. And people asked me, that person, that rabbi, he asked me, what are you going to do if they're not going to let you speak with the Rav anymore? So I told him, look, I don't need to be worried what's going to happen when I'm going to leave. When I'm going to leave, it's your time to be worried what's going to happen with you. Because I'm going in the name of the truth. From good reasons I'm leaving the yeshiva and I'm going to do my job. From honest reasons. Because bad things happen to me over here and that's why I chose to leave. So now you're going to have to deal with the consequences of the fact that I'm leaving. I won't have to deal with that. You're going to stay with the problem. And he didn't have anything to answer me because he was not able to deal with what they said. But today we can see the results of that amazing act that I did, choosing my family and the truth and life on the lie that was surrounding us back then. And people can not accept it, people can have their thoughts about it, I couldn't care less. I know that I'm saving lives every day. I know that until today, no one can count the numbers of people that we influence good into their lives. No one can count the numbers. No one. We have thousands and thousands of followers on all social media outlets. People are coming from across the world for my classes. I wouldn't even come to my classes from such distance. People are coming. People are catching flights to come to my classes and people are booking events and people are doing amazing things only because they see the power of truth in those speeches and not because that I'm a righteous man, just because that I chose truth and life on lies and on death and the truth is a witness to itself and the truth is something that people recognize. People are not coming to me because I'm the best learner, because I'm wealthy, because I'm rich, because I'm wise, because I'm talented, because I'm gifted. No. People are watching and enjoying my lectures because I'm honest, because I'm sincere. That's the only reason. That's it. Nothing else. When you will work on your honesty, you will become a magnet 
for people to enjoy from you and to receive from you. You don't need to have anything else except of your honesty. You're already surrounded. It's the miracle of creation that Hashem made it to be like that. That you're already surrounded with all the things that are required and needed for your purpose, for your goal to come true. You just need to connect yourself to who you are, to the real you, to the truth of your being, to the essence of your life, to the purpose of your creation. Ask yourself, who am I? What's the mission? What should I do? If you're finding yourself lying and giving up and avoiding the truth and, and making up stories, stop. Think about it. Try to work on that. One step after the other. Don't jump, jump to deep, deep, deep water. Wait. Think. Pray. How am I fixing on what I should work? You don't have an advice? Go pray. Hashem, help me. Hashem, I need an advice. Shalom Bait is an issue. Children is an issue. Parnasa, money, economic is an issue. Health is an issue. Hashem, I need to talk. Speak for 10 minutes about your health. Not only asking, Hashem, I want to be healthy. Hashem, I need to be strong. Maybe now you need to be sick. Maybe you won't wake up until you're going to reach rock bottom and only from that point you will wake up. Maybe now you need to be weak. Maybe now for a week you need to be weak. Maybe now you need to be destroyed in your Shalom bite. Maybe now you need to be crushed by a humiliating thing that will wake you up to reach Hashem and to know Him in a way that, that you and Him will never going to be separated ever again. Maybe it's so needed and important for you to go through all of your life challenges and difficulties for the purpose of completing your faith, achieving your real humility, becoming the real you, being able to be honest and stop making up stories and pretending to be someone that you're not and making other people love you and like you and hiding your fears and not letting other people knowing who you really are. Making yourself to become a liar instead of being a representative of the truth by being honest, by being yourself. By being proud of who that you are, with the scars, with the holes in your ears, with your tattoos, with your piercing holes, with your... all your lackings. That's me. That's me. I was doing tshuva on making tattoos, and then I was doing tshuva on removing those tattoos with laser. I'm telling you the truth. I did tshuva on that. I regret the fact that I removed it with laser. First day, time in my life, I dared to go to a mikveh. I went in the beginning of my shiva to the mikveh. There was a Haredi person looked at me. He was explosive. He starts screaming at me in the mikveh. Why did you do that? What did you do to yourself? It's not allowed. I didn't know where to bury myself. The mikveh water is clear. I couldn't hide myself in the mikveh. That person killed me, destroyed me. I didn't know what to do. That fear killed something inside of me and pushed me to feel bad about my tattoos. Why should I feel bad about my tattoos? Why? I've been hurt I've been injured in my war, in my Vietnam, in my Holocaust, in my exile. I've been hit. I've been damaged. I've been scarred in my life. Why is it I'm going to be embarrassed in my accidents, in my, in my failures? I failed. Why is it I will feel bad with myself if I fail? I failed. Now I'm going to be strong enough to admit and to work on myself and to understand that I have a problem, that I had a problem, and I'm going to work on myself. 
But those fears from other screamings, from other insultings, and other fears of other people, and more books, and more lectures, and more words of other people. Oh, you have klipot on you, husks on you, coverings on you. You go to the mikveh with those tattoos. It's the only contamination that is not being purified in the mikveh. You go out from the mikveh with the contamination of the mik of the tattoo. Snakes are all over you, whatever. I never felt that contamination. I never even checked with myself if I feel wrong about making those tattoos. I'm not saying that it's good to make tattoos. The Torah is not allowing that. But to remove it is something that you need to feel right and ready to do. And not to do it out of stress, and not out of fear, and not because of other people's opinions. And on that I'm doing a bigger tshuva than on the fact that I did the tattoos when I was younger. When I was younger, I did the tattoo because I wanted, and I felt like doing it. And maybe I was stupid, maybe it was wrong. But it wasn't such a bad thing in that mindset, in those days, it was nothing. It was a game, it was a joke, I made tattoos, I couldn't care less, I felt tough, I felt strong, I wanted to show off, whatever, nonsense, stuyot. not something heroic, not something big and great, stupid. But it was harder for me to admit that I was stupid, and that was worse. Not to be able to admit that I was wrong is a worse sin than to be wrong. To deny and not to do tshuva and to follow your fears to a foreign dark world of depression, of kfiyadatit, forcing the religion on other people. You cannot force spirituality. You can never force a spirit. A spirit is flowing away. You try to force it, where it is? I'm, I'm forcing the air. You cannot, it's already there. No one can force the truth on someone else. You can just offer it. You can just allow it. You can just share it. You can just let it be. You cannot force spirituality. You cannot force. When you force religion, it's not the religion of truth anymore. That's it. You misinterpret the purpose of that religion and you are now making other people lose their path while they're really searching for the truth and you're stopping them from reaching it by forcing them into your religion. Because you're forcing your religion on them because you're afraid to deal with their questions, with their doubts. Their doubts are making you to deal, forcing you to deal with your doubts. And because that you're not ready to deal with your doubts, you're rather to shut their mouths and not to let them express themselves. And that they're not going to ask, and you're not allowed to talk that, and they're not allowed to ask about that, and we're not talking about those issues, and we're not discussing that, and we already talked about it, and it's the last time that you mentioned that issue, and I already told you not to talk about it. Who are you? A cruel leader. Instead of being a nice and gener generous and humble person that is not afraid to deal with his own fears. Deal with your fears. What's going to happen? So you're doubting, so you're not sure that Hashem loves you, so you're not so sure that your prayers will be answered, so go to the field, so go and pray for that, so go and work on your confidence, go and build yourself, go stabilize yourself, instead of destroying other people in the name of your fears. So, again, I'm apologizing. Thank you for listening. My wife, she heard me enough in this lifetime, so I need you to listen. <laughs> Hashem will bless you all. And um, to believe in Hashem, it's to believe in wonders above nature. It's to believe in the fact that Yoshua was able to stop the sun from setting, and Moses was able to open the sea. And the Levites, they were able to fly with the Holy Ark. And that Elijah the prophet was flying on flaming horses to the sky. And that you can see the voices and that they were eating clear food that caused man in the desert for 40 years. And they were 
all their outfits, all their clothing, all their shoes were growing by themselves and clouds were protecting them. And to believe in the Creator is to believe in those wonders. It's not to be religious. To be religious is, is a minhag, is a tradition. You can keep it, it's great. But you need to believe in the Creator that you're serving and not to serve your fears. If you serve your fears, you're not serving the Creator. I hope you got it. Thank you. Chazak Baruch. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.